Okay, in this tutorial we're going to demonstrate how to do the CRUD functions in MySQL. And if you remember, CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. We're also going to demonstrate how to create a table and then drop it. So I'm going to go ahead and log into iTerm. And I'm going to do, uh, you all should still be logged in. So in this case, I'm going to type in SSH. As soon as I launch iTerm, I hit a space. And then the next thing I'm going to do, let me make the font bigger here so it's easier for you all to see. Uh, SSH, and then you would put your 4x4, but I don't have a 4x4, so I'll put that. Then the at symbol. And then the server we're connected to is gaylordcms.ou.edu. Click return. It's asking for my password, so this will be your password that you use to log into the computers in Gaylord. So I'll type in my password. And I'm in now on CMS, so I'm going to launch my SQL. And this is when you'll use your hyphen U, and then you would put your 4x4. I'm not going to do that. And then P hyphen P, and hit return. It's going to ask you for, at this point, this is your student ID number. So I want to go ahead and type in my password. And we're in MySQL. So what we want to do first is we're going to use database, and I'm going to use Billups. And it says database change, so you would use your own last name. Each of you all's database is your last name, so use Billups. And then let's go ahead and do show tables. And you see right now we have no tables. We have an empty set. So what we want to do is create a table. Now in class we ha had you all write some, uh, some queries that create tables. So I, here's one I have right now. So I'm going to copy and paste that. If you have some questions about what we did in class the other day, go ahead and ask me. So I'm going to copy and paste that out of this file. I'm going to move that aside. I'm going to get down to my SQL. I'm going to paste that in. And I'm going to hit return. Oops. And it looks like I have an error. Uh, current timestamp. It could be. I have an error in my MySQL code here. So I need to track this out. I'm going to shrink this down just a little bit so I can see a little better. Okay, so it's telling me check the manual corresponds. You have a version for your right index to use near current timestamp. So it seems to be I have a problem in my code over here in my query where I type uh, story published timestamp default story updated timestamp. Oh, I need to put default right there. Default current timestamp. Okay, now I should be able to copy and paste that in. So I had a slight error in my query that I wrote this morning. So I'll paste that in, hit return, and you see now it says uh, I have one warning, which is not that big a deal. So let's go ahead and run the show tables now. Show tables. And there, now I have one table. Now what we can do at this point is there are a couple commands that I want to show you before I get into the CRUD functions. Is I want to show you how to describe stories. Now what describe and then the table name does, it shows you the characteristics of that table. So you can see now it has story ID, it's integer 10 unsigned, and it's the primary key, and it cannot be null. Uh, then we have story headline and a car 55, and it can't be null. Teaser, text, and you see the data types there. And then we have story published, and the value is timestamp, and the default value is 000, and story updated timestamp no, and the default value is current timestamp. So at this point, we're ready to go ahead and start working with our uh, CRUD functions. Now, typically, the first one that you'll do is the select function which is corresponds to the R in the CRUD function. So I'm going to go ahead and do select. And what I'm doing, and we'll have more tutorials about this, is I'm going to do select all, and that's the asterisk sign, select all from stories. When I hit enter, it says there are no rows inside my stories. So the select function really has no value to us right now with this table because we have nothing in there. So what I want to do is I want to populate my first story in my stories table. So I'm going to pull over my uh, text edit file that I have working here and I'm going to go ahead and write the insert query. 
So the insert query looks like this. It's insert into. Now I'm inserting into the stories table at this point, so I'll type stories there. Then I'm going to open parentheses. And then I need to start listing off the columns that I want to put values in. So what I do is I list column by column. Now I don't do story ID, because if you remember what I talked about in class and you'll become really familiar soon, is that the story ID is populated by MySQL when we start inserting things into uh, the tables rows. So I'm not going to do story ID because it's generated by itself. So the first, one, the first column I'm going to tell that I want to put stuff into is story headline. And you can see I have my file over here so I, from the describe function that I can see my column types. So story headline, story teaser, comma, story text, comma, and I'm going to do story published because the first value when I put it in by default is going to put zero. So I need to do something else to that. So that's the first part. So insert into stories and then you list the columns that you're inserting values into. And then you type the word values and then you open the parentheses again and these are the values that you're inserting into the columns now this sequence here story headline story teaser story text story published the values that they put into need to be uh, corresponding so they need to be in the same sequence also you'll note that these are string values from that chapter in the book that we read and then the rest are timestamp values or data types so for story headline I need to put it in quotes so I'm going to use double quotes and I could use single quotes and we'll talk about single quotes and double quotes later in class so the value is going to be man bites dog and then I close the quotes I have to use quotes because it's a string value and then I put a comma not a period a comma then I'm going to open another quote and I'm going to type in this is the teaser for this story and that's obviously just generic text, but in a real situation, that would be your real teaser. I'm going to hit a comma. The next value that I have here is my story text, and it's a string value, so I use quotes again, and I'm going to say the stories, the stories uh, body text is here. Close that. I'll put a period there. Uh, uh, the story's body text is here then I close that and then I have uh, the last value that I have to populate so I've done taking care of the headline teaser text and now I'm doing story published and I'm gonna type in current underscore timestamp then I'm gonna put close parentheses semicolon now I can copy and paste this into my SQL or into the terminal that's connected to my SQL and then hit return and you see here now it says that oh, the query was okay that means the query was successful and I have affected one row and it took about one what was that a millisecond I guess uh, so what I want to do now I can run my select function so I'm going to type in this again I'm going to type in select all from stories and now if I run that query you can see I'm going to shrink my uh, font down a bit so you can kind of see what's happening. So there is my first row and you see it's generated the story ID. The headline is Man Bites Dog. The teaser is this is the teaser for the story. The story text, the bot, story's body text is here and then I have my story published timestamp and then I have my story updated. So so far we've done our insert, we've done our create. Sorry, we've done create of the crud, which is uh, insert. We have done uh, the read, which is select, which we just ran. So we need to do update and delete. So I'm going to move over to my text edit file and write the update query. So let me move this up now. To update a row, we do update, and then we type in the table that we're updating. So update stories. And what we want to do is we want to set and we say the column that we want to change. So in this case, we want to change, uh, let's change the story headline. So update story, set story headline. And then we use the equal sign and we're going to have to use string value. So we use quotes uh, because that's a string value inside the story headline column. So we're in update story, set story headline equal to uh, 
man bites cat. Close the string value. Now if I run this query right now, now it will change that column for every row. Now it's no big deal right now because we only have one row. Uh, so you can see if I go ahead and do this, well actually let me go ahead and insert this uh, column again. I'm going to insert two stories that are identical so I can give you a sense of what I mean. So I'm going to create another row. I'm going to run the select function again and you see now I have two stories in there. So right now if I say update story set story headline man bites cat when I make this application when I run this query it's gonna to apply to every story which is not what we want but I want to demonstrate that for you so it's made every change and you see the query ran and it reflected two rows so now if I select my select all from stories you see now every headline is man bites cat well that's not what we want we want one to be man bites cat and one to be man bites dog so when you're manipulating just one row you need to you need to add something different to your update query so I'm gonna go ahead and do changes to man bites dog and I wanna put a limiter on here so I'm updating stories and I'm setting a story headline to man bites dog but I want to do it where story ID and I'm looking my story reference over here and I want the first story is the one where man bites dog so I'm gonna say update story set story headline equal to man's bite man bites dog where story ID is equal to one and now if I copy and paste that query run that over here in my SQL it says it only affected one row and that's what we want so now if I run my select all from stories function you can see story ID 1 is a situation where a man has bitten a dog and story ID 2 is a story where a man has bitten a cat. Uh, so that's how we do the update function. The last thing that we need to do from the CRUD functionality is because we've already done create which is insert, we've done read which is select which you see will run the select quite frequently and then we've done the update uh, query as well and the last one we, we need to do is delete so what we're going to do is we're going to do delete from and I'm just typing this directly into my SQL this time so we're going to delete from stories now if I ran that query right now it's going to delete every story inside the stories table and we don't ever want to do that especially when you have thousands of stories or hundreds of stories inside your table uh, you never want to run this command so what we're going to do is we're going to use our limiter again so we're going to say delete from stories where story ID is equal to 2 and so we're going to delete the man bites cat story so once I run that query it says the query was okay and one row was affected so if I run my select function again you see now we only have one story and so we've run through all the crud functionalities we've learned how to describe our tables so we can see the characteristics of the table that we created and we've also done uh, show tables and this shows us how many tables are in our database so in this case Billups only has one table which is stories so what I'm gonna do is delete this table so when Billups starts watching these tutorials that uh, he's got a clean database so I'm gonna delete or drop a table so the first thing I do is do drop table I believe I'm working from memory here drop table stories and now it, and it worked query okay zero rows affected and so let's go ahead and try to do show tables and you see now it's an empty set so that concludes this tutorial we showed about how to create tables we showed how to drop tables we showed how to describe tables we just learned how to show tables we also learned how to write the queries for selecting inserting updating and deleting which all correspond to the CRUD functionalities in relational databases.